Welcome back guys. In today's video, we will look at different types of open systems and how to approach open system questions. Let's get started. Recall the general open system energy balance, which is important for all of the open systems we will work with today. In the examples we will look at, we analyze the systems at steady state. If the values of all the variables in a process do not change with time, the process is said to be at steady state. In other words, the amount of material going in is the same as the amount of material coming out. There is no build-up within the system. If we look at the following process of a system with two streams flowing in and one stream flowing out, one of the inflow streams has nitrogen flowing at a rate of 100 kg per hour and the other has oxygen also flowing at 100 kg per hour. The outlet stream has 140 kg per hour of nitrogen and 60 kg per hour of oxygen. Is this process at steady state? The total material flowing in is 200 kg per hour and the total flowing out is also 200 kg per hour. Thus, this is a steady state process. In steady state processes, we can simplify our energy balance since the change in internal energy is equal to zero. If there's only one stream in and one stream out, we can simplify our energy balance even more since we don't have to add all the flow energy from all the different streams. We can also change our energy balance when working with moles, where N is moles and MW is molar weight. Remember that we can simplify the energy balances. For example, Adiabatic will make our heat zero. You can neglect potential and kinetic energy in most cases. Constant volume processes, the work is zero. And at steady state, change in internal energy is zero. We will be looking at the following process devices. Nozzles and diffusers, turbines, pumps and compressors, and heat exchangers. First, let's talk about nozzles and diffusers. These process devices convert between internal and kinetic energy by changing the cross-sectional area through which a fluid flows. In nozzles, flow is constricted by decreasing the cross-sectional area through which the fluid flows, thus increasing the speed and with it the kinetic energy. Diffusers increase the cross-sectional area to decrease the flow velocity. In these processes, kinetic energy is important in the energy balance. Usually, there is no heat exchange and no work, so we can simplify the energy balance as follows. Let's look at an example question. Air enters a steady state diffuser at a velocity of 250 meters per second, a pressure of 100 kPa and a temperature of 300 Kelvin. The air exits the diffuser at a velocity of 30 meters per second and a pressure of 120 kPa. Assume the process is adiabatic and that the air behaves like an ideal gas with a constant heat capacity at constant pressure of 1005 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Calculate the exit temperature of the gas. Let's start by writing out our energy balance for diffusers. We can cancel out the mass since this is a steady state process. We know that we can calculate enthalpy with heat capacity and temperature. And since we have constant heat capacity, we don't have to integrate. Thus, our energy balance becomes heat capacity times temperature in plus a half velocity squared equals heat capacity times temperature 2 plus a whole velocity squared. We plug in our values and get a final temperature of 330.6 Kelvin. Next, we look at turbines, pumps and compressors. These processes involve the transformation of energy via shaft work. A turbine generates power as a result of fluid passing through a set of rotating blades. A pump is a device used to move and pressurize incompressible fluids, such as liquids. It is used to increase the pressure or move fluids from one place to another. A compressor is a device used to increase the pressure of compressible fluids, such as gases. It increases pressure by decreasing the volume. In these processes, potential energy is important in the energy balance and usually there is no heat transfer. Thus, we can simplify our energy balance. Let's look at an example. A pump is used to raise the water from a reservoir at the elevation of 10 meters to another reservoir at an elevation of 50 meters. The flow rate of the water through the pump is 0.05 meters cubed per second and the pump's efficiency is 80%. The density of water is 1000 kg per meter cubed and the gravitational acceleration is 9.81. Calculate the theoretical power required by the pump. Then, determine the actual power input to the pump, considering its efficiency. First, we start by writing the energy balance. There is no inflow streams, only outflow streams, so we can take the first term out. Then, we neglect the enthalpy and bulk kinetic energy. We can rewrite this energy balance to get an equation for the work. 
We don't have the mass, but we have the density and the volumetric flow rate, which we can use to calculate the mass. We plug in the values and get a mass flow rate of 50 kg per second. Next, we calculate the height difference, which is 50 minus 10, which is equal to 40 meters. We plug the values into our equation and get a work of 19,620 watts. Then, to calculate the actual power needed, we just divide by the efficiency, which leads to the power being 24,525 watts. Lastly, we will look at heat exchangers. These processes are designed to heat up or cool down fluids through thermal contact with another fluid at a different temperature. In these processes, we can neglect potential and kinetic energy as well as work. And that's how to approach open system questions. I hope this video helped you understand open system energy balances. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or email me.